Lucy? 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 For God's sake. Where you been? Come on, we gotta go. Wow, tight squeeze. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to Oz. Now I thought this video was a good time as any to speak about coffee and caffeine due to the Aussies loving a good old coffee. But I want to focus more so on caffeine rather than coffee, especially whilst in a fat loss period or just coming out of one. Because even for, I feel like the likes of me during go through that last cutting phase that I've just done, caffeine can almost become like a crutch or a safety blanket for shadowing some of that tiredness or lack of energy. And also with caffeine being ever more so present on coffee shop corners, on the fridges and supermarkets, or on the pills and supplement shops. It's no wonder that we're consuming more coffee than ever. But I think before we delve into like some of the dangers, some of the side effects, and some of the purposes and reasons for consuming caffeine, it's gonna be different from each individual, so there's no recommended allowance that I can say categorically you should be having. Because it's gonna be a difference from 65-year-old Mrs. Miggins who lives down the road, compared to myself who chugs monsters like it's H2O. Because the amount of caffeine that we consume is going to have a lot of different factors which need to be taken into consideration such as gender, age, amount of ca caffeine currently being consumed, activity level and a few other contributing factors. And there is quite a few negative side effects that can come along with the overconsumption of your daily allowance such as anxiety, behaviour changes, crashes, toxicity. And shit your pants. This is why quite often when I go to a coffee shop now, I'll order. Um, can I just get a decaf and a carnet, please? Yeah, I don't know, it's okay. And then, what type, what type of um, dairy cream milk do you do? We have skim, full cream, and then soy, olive. Can I have hot soy milk, please? Oh, it can be very difficult to work out what your caffeine consumption is if you're just basing it off what you're having per cup. For example, this kind of coffee is, is what I like to call a fraudster. It's basically just a decaf um, Americano with a, a cheeky bit of hot soy. You've probably seen me most mornings having a decaf with a Monster just simply because I like the taste of coffee. I like the taste of Monster Energy, but I don't want to get the caffeine hit of both and be having almost my full daily amount of caffeine within one sitting. Also, different coffees may have different caffeine content. So, for example, if I go for a hobo coffee, at like like some McDonald's or something like that, that type of ca coffee will have anywhere from like 140 to 150 milligrams of caffeine per cup. Whereas if we go to somewhere like Starbucks and have a, a grande, that kind of coffee can have anywhere up to 300 milligrams of caffeine. Also, whilst on the energy drink kind of topic, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I think it deserves a video in itself, but I think a lot of people have put off from having energy drinks because they think that the, the ears are going to fall off, the insides are going to fall out, all the fingers are going to turn into toes, mainly due to the fact of the stigma that is created by the media around the sport. I mean, now sport, I mean, is pretty much just like an artificial sweetener which is added to diet drinks or you can add it to, to coffee and that kind of thing. And I think it's got a bad name for itself because of the moral panic that the media has created, but is actually being recommended by the FDA that for you to even reach your daily allowance consumption. I think it's around the numbers 40 to 50 milligrams per kilogram of body weight you would need to consume per day, which you need to be slamming back about 50 cans of Diet Coke to even hit that number. Which unless you're some kind of which unless you're some kind of Diet Coke fiend, you're probably not gonna hit. So let's move on. I think it's also very easy because we are in Oz and it's almost like culture, if that's the right word. That everyone just goes through, should we go for a coffee when we're bored and nothing to do. Not that we're not doing anything out here, but we're kind of a bit more laid back. So it's quite easy to sink three, four, five, six, seven coffees without even thinking about it. And that's where coffees can massively take you over your caffeine limit as opposed to cans because you wouldn't sink seven, eight cans of Monster. One, you'd just be a bloated as fuck. Two, you'd be shitting through the eye of a needle. So what effect does caffeine have on fat loss? Well, firstly, caffeine acts as a central nervous stimulant, which basically means when it reaches your brain, it'll make you a lot more alert. You'll feel more awake, less tired, and sometimes it can even generally be used to treat headaches and migraines. But then obviously physically, it has a massive help in terms of your performance and also your energy levels. Now, in more controlled substances, which we tend to know as 
pre-workout or fat burners. It helps increase energy levels, which obviously in turn helps increase performance or it'll help you move more in order to expend more calories. I.e. fat burners are not a magic solution or a magic pill. They're just something to help you move more when you are more tired. And also they've been shown to have less of an effect or an impact on those who are already obese. So if you're thinking about using fat burners, then you're best off just making a cup of Nescafe. However, saying that it does have a suppressant effect on your appetite, which can be helpful when it comes to diet brain or when you've got fast cake hands. The next thing that I've already spoke about is how can caffeine affect sleep? So this is something that massively affected me, especially during my last cut, was because I was getting these nights where, not to the point where I was having insomnia, but I was waking up in the middle of the night with real bad sweats, almost soaking wet through. And this could have been an effect of my high caffeine intake due to caffeine being a psychoactive stimulant. This is basically because caffeine may make you have a more restless sleep or even blocks deeper sleep by up to 20%. And this is due to something called caffeine's half-life. So caffeine's half-life can be six hours or its quarter-life be 12 hours. So this means that basically if you have a coffee, say at 12 o'clock in the day, you knit down Starbucks, grab your Americano, by 12 o'clock that night, a quarter of that caffeine, so maybe 50 milligrams, can still be in your system at 12 o'clock at night. I think this is the bit where people will massively underestimate the impact of caffeine and the fact that it is still a drug. And this is something that I didn't really realize because I was knocking back like three or four monsters per day. And even up until like 10 p.m. at night, whilst I was doing work, thinking it's not really gonna affect me. I'm quite intolerant to caffeine, but I then didn't realize it's, it's half-life and it's quarter-life and how long that or how prolonged the after effect can still be and the effect that it can have on your sleep. In conclusion, what I would say is it's completely up to you how much caffeine or how much coffee you want to drink and it's completely independent and subject to each individual to what your recommended daily allowance should be. I started to take my mind down after my cutting period just purely for the fact that I was drinking it, even because I was bored, or mainly for satiety. So when I was feeling that empty feeling that sometimes you get when you're dieting, I was just kind of looking to keep full and suppress my appetite. And I was fine with doing this via drinking coffee or monsters a lot of the time. All I would say is whatever you do, do it in moderation. And take into consideration, are you having crashes during the day? Or more so, are you having crashes during workouts? So are you able to do exercise one, two, and then when you get into three or four, you're having a crash or post-workout, you're having to come down from the amount of caffeine. It could it be a placebo effect? So a lot of the people will get into habits or routines, like I'm guilty of myself, going to the kitchen first thing in the morning, starting the day with a coffee just because it's habitual. Also consider when are you having your last coffee. Like we discussed from before, it does have a half-life or a quarter-life, which can start to affect the sleeping patterns. Lastly, do you need to quit caffeine, take a break, taper down, or even cycle it? Now, caffeine can be cycled if you build up a bit of a tolerance to it, just to give your brain receptors a little bit of a break. Now you can cycle caffeine if you are someone who drinks a lot of it quite often. What this will do is just recalibrate your brain receptors in order to reset your tolerance. The body likes to almost have a balancing effect whenever it's moving around hormones, especially with drugs such as caffeine, to allow you not to tip the balance too much. And what I would say is try and keep caffeine for when you really need it. And if you're going to go out and have coffee for social, try and have a couple of decafs and swap those Americanos out. If you found this video helpful guys, then please make sure to give it a like and a thumbs up. And if this is your first time visiting my channel, then please make sure that you subscribe. And I will catch you in my next video.